You have such beautiful hair. The lady smiled as she passed me in the mall. Why, thank you. I shook my hair slightly for emphasis. That was only my 50th compliment about my hair today, and my ego was loving it. You see, ever since I was small, I had this thick, gorgeous hair that was always the envy of girls in my class from as early as preschool. At age five, I began doing shampoo commercials and I've been doing them ever since. With mom and dad running their own financial firm, I was left home alone a lot. Don't feel sorry for me just yet. Keep watching my story and see how everything worked out. Oh, and before I forget, I met my boyfriend Marco at one of the commercials I did. His hair wasn't as great as mine, but then again, whose hair was? Yes, Marco. I walked up the driveway and found my keys in my purse. I'll meet you around six, but don't keep me waiting this time. I turned the key into the hole and pushed open the front door. I came face to face with mom as she tried to fight off a tall, heavily bearded man. As soon as mom saw me, her face grew pale. I saw the fear in her eyes. Beverly, run! Without thinking twice, I ran out of the house all the way to the bus stop. I sat on a bench and panted. Hello? Hello? Bev, what's going on? I forgot that I was on the phone with Marco. Marco, something happened. Can you come over? Marco agreed and then we hung up. Who was that man? I'd never seen him before in my life. I didn't have to wait long for a bus and approximately 30 minutes later, I arrived at Marco's. He was waiting on the front porch for me. He ran up and hugged me. Babe, you're shivering. Let's go inside. I nodded and allowed Marco to guide me into the house and to the kitchen. His parents were just like mine, very busy and hardly at home. Did you call your dad? Marco poured me a glass of juice as I sat by the kitchen table. Oh no, how could I have forgotten to call dad? I quickly called dad and explained everything to him while Marco prepared sandwiches for us. Keep your phone close by. Dad hung up the call. Marco placed the sandwiches on the table, but I pushed mine away. Bev, everything will be okay. Marco stood up and held my hand. If you don't want to eat, then let's watch a movie together. Marco took my hand and we went to the TV room where he switched on a movie. After a few hours, my phone rang and I answered frantically. Hello? Hello? Bev, I've got mom. Listen carefully. Dad gave me an address to meet them and said, Don't tell anyone, not even Marco. The line went dead. I've got to go. I grabbed my purse and kissed him quickly. I'll call you later, I said on my way out. About 15 minutes later, as I passed an alley that was close to where dad told me to meet them, I felt someone grab me around my waist and they threw their hand over my mouth and pulled me into an alley. I struggled until I heard dad's voice. Beverly, it's me. Dad spun me around and I hugged him. My eyes landed on mom. She had a swollen eye. I hugged her and cried. We don't have time for this now. Beverly, give me your phone. I handed dad my phone and I watched as he separated it and destroyed it quickly. But dad. Let's go. Dad held my hand and I followed him. The three of us wove between the streets and alleys and hid in the shadows until we came to a mountainside. With the help of mom and dad, I was able to reach the top. How far again? I wiped the sweat from my brow. We're almost there. Finally, we arrived at a large bronze gate. Dad punched in the numbers and the gate slowly opened and we headed into the house. The house looked like an old Victorian house from the late 50s on the outside, but once we got inside, it was modernized. As soon as the door closed, I looked at my parents. I demand to know what's going on. Well? Dad walked further into the house. Your mom and I aren't who you think we are. I raised an eyebrow. What do you mean? Mom added, We steal for rich families. I gasped. Is this why you're never home? Because you're common thieves? There's nothing common about what we do. Dad's eyes grew dark. I ignored Dad and continued. So you're common thieves that, let me guess, are running from the law? What did you do, leave a fingerprint for the police to find? Dad raised his hand to slap me, but Mom caught it just in time. Beverly, when we went to retrieve the bracelet for our client, a $2 million bracelet, which was for the client's daughter's 18th birthday, I got jumped. And it never would have happened, but you insisted on doing the job solo. Dad rubbed his temples. I laughed. <laughs> so another thief stole from you? That's laughable to say the least. This time, I got slapped, but it wasn't from Dad. It was from Mom. If we don't find the bracelet, all of us will never be seen again. You better pull yourself together and stop with the snide remarks. I have plenty more where that came from. I rubbed my face and willed myself not to cry. Why can't you just tell them you didn't get the bracelet? Because... Dad looked between mom and I. 
The bracelet was already paid for, and that's what they're expecting. We need to find those thieves before the client finds us. Honey, one more thing. Mom looked at me strangely. You'll have to cut your hair. What? No! It wasn't a suggestion. You will be cutting your hair. And Gina, get out the tattoo kit. I think she'll look nice with freckles. They already have the pictures we need to create different personas. Let's get to work. Over the next few hours, I changed from Beverly Madison to Faith Stevens. I cried throughout the entire process, from mom cutting my hair to her tattooing freckles on my face. After a few hours, mom, dad, and I looked completely different. I couldn't believe my parents were doing this to me. They ruined my life. After my new look, I found a bedroom and locked the door. I hated my parents. Good parents don't bring harm to their children. Suddenly, I heard mom as she spoke on the other side of my door. I opened the door slightly. Mom had a phone. I knew what I needed to do. Later that night, I snuck into the room my parents shared. Mom was fast asleep, but dad was nowhere to be found. The phone was on mom's nightstand. I grabbed it quickly and headed back to my room as quickly as I dared. As soon as I was safe inside, I locked the door and called Marco. Hello? His voice was husky. Hi, babe. It's me. You'll never guess what my parents did to me. I told him where we were and what transpired that afternoon at the house. I wish I could be with you. I groaned. Why can't you? Leave now and I'll pick you up halfway. We'll talk to my parents and we'll find a way to handle it. After a few minutes, I put the phone in my purse and slung my purse over my shoulder. I carefully slipped out the window and bolted to the front gate. I quickly scaled it and ran. As soon as I felt safe enough to stop, I called Marco and he picked me up. Babe, I didn't recognize you. What did your parents do? He asked as I jumped into the passenger seat. Thank you for coming. I knew I could depend on you. We passed the exit to get to his house. Where are we going? My dad has a cabin by the Lapinot River. I figured you'd be safer there. We arrived at the cabin at two in the morning. We were both so tired we fell asleep on the sofa. But when I woke up, I didn't expect things to take a turn for the worse. I opened my eyes slowly. They felt heavy and my head spun. It took me a while to realize where I was and that Marco and I were tied up in chairs. I was able to move the duct tape from my mouth after 10 minutes and I whispered to Marco, Marco, wake up, please wake up, I repeated. After a few minutes, his head moved from side to side until he stared at me. Just then, the door opened. You brats are finally up. Mom leaned against the door frame. Mom, what are you doing here? Why are we tied up? Mom laughed. <laughs> you really thought I was asleep? You're as quiet as an elephant. Mom rolled her eyes. I knew you'd take my phone once you realized I had one. Once you had that, I was able to track you here. Another person entered the room. Hey, kids. Marco's dad smiled. Mom, what is this? Well, Leo and I are business partners. He grabbed mom and kissed her. Can you believe it? Is that all I am? Leo, not here. Ew, mom, where's dad and what did you do? As I was saying, Leo and I are business partners and we got a new buyer. We're on our way to take the bracelet to them right now. You and Marco will be used as collateral damage if need be. But mom. Don't but mom me. I never wanted you. Your dad, on the other hand, always wanted a daughter. Imagine he even said he wanted to give up our lifestyle to spend more time with you. I wasn't about to let that happen, so I got rid of him. We've wasted enough time, Gina, shall we? Mom <laughs> smiled and walked behind Marco and I and hit us over the head. We both fell unconscious. I woke up to someone pouring water on my face. Wake up, princess. Leo snarled. If either of you make a sound, that'll be the last sound you make, understood? Marco and I nodded. Our hands were tied behind our backs as we were dragged out of the van and into the warehouse by mom and Leo. One of the bodyguards at the entrance showed us to the waiting room. There were no windows nor any furniture in the room, except one tiny table in the corner. The door opened and a man in a suit with a briefcase walked in with two bodyguards. Do you have the bracelet? Mom pulled out the bracelet. The man took it, walked over to the table and got to work. After inspecting the bracelet, he looked at the bodyguards. Tell the boss it's the real thing. One of the bodyguards left and returned shortly with the boss. Dad? Dad wore headphones on one ear, just like those secret agents, and was dressed in a black suit. I could tell Leo and mom were also shocked by the nervous glances they shared. Hello, Gina. Dad nodded in Leo's direction. Leo, release them. He nodded to his bodyguards. 
Marco's and my ropes were untied and I rubbed the bruises on my wrists. But how? Mom stepped back fearfully. Dad cut off Mom. I should be surprised, but honestly, I'm not. When I heard your plans for my informant, I didn't want to believe it, but I had to check it out. Informant? Mom raised an eyebrow. Yes, his informant. Marco stepped forward. Has my entire life been a lie? I screamed. Marco tried to hold my hand, but I pulled away. Okay, boys, you can take them away. Dad said into the speaker of his headphones. Men dressed all in black barged into the room, handcuffed Mom and Leo, and took them away. I'm sorry, Beverly. I had to go through the motions with Mom or we would never have caught her. And she would have been bad for business. All it's ever been for you is business. Maybe you should try working on your family, Dad. I pushed past Dad and Marco and walked out of the warehouse. About a year has passed and, well, things are still shaky between Dad and I, but he's been home a lot more. As for Marco, I ended the relationship. I mean, what kind of boyfriend keeps secrets from his girlfriend? I mean, I can't get rid of Dad because he's family. Or can I?